Are your kidneys toxic? Because over one in seven, one in seven Americans have kidney disease and some don't even know about it. But wait, don't panic. Today, you and I are going to talk about the eight signs that could mean you have toxic kidneys. And even more importantly, how you can prevent this. So let's talk about it. Kidneys are an incredible organ. You would be actually surprised to realize that they're actually quite small. They're the size of a large fist, about five inches, so a bit bigger than this. And I've actually held them in my hands and in cadaver lab back in med school. And they're just amazing. How they do all of that is it's a lot. Your kidneys are basically like a filter. They are what keep your blood clean. They're your body's filter to get all that waste, all the toxins, all the excess fluid out of your blood and into your urine so that it can get the heck out of there. Without them, your body would build up in these toxins and it can lead to serious health issues. So a simple way to think of kidneys is as a filter, as a way to keep your body and blood clean. And your kidneys also play a vital role in balancing electrolyte levels in your body. Oh my, jeez, that scared me and regulating your blood pressure. And they're also involved in production of red blood cells, which are important for lots of things, making sure you don't have anemia and keeping your bones healthy. Even though kidneys are so important, more than 37 million Americans have kidney disease and it's growing at an alarming rate. If you know seven people, one of them could have kidney disease. I don't think people realize how common this is. Kidneys and kidney disease are really complex, but I like to kind of think of them in two categories, acute and chronic. This mic is just a disaster. Stay. So you have acute kidney injury and then chronic kidney disease. They can have overlapping signs and symptoms, but they can also differ. But acute kidney injury is typically temporary and it can be caused by things like medications, toxins, infections, severe dehydration, autoimmune diseases, and chronic kidney disease. The two most common causes of it that are really important for us to talk about today are diabetes and high blood pressure. These are two things that your lifestyle can dramatically affect. All right, let's go. Eight key signs that your kidneys could be toxic. Number one, changes in urination. So the kidneys are involved in creating urine. So of course you're going to see some changes in urination if you have damaged kidneys. Now this can vary a lot. You can end up having decreased urinary output because of damaged kidneys, so you're not peeing very much at all or you can actually end up having increased urinary frequency, meaning you pee very often, a lot of times. It doesn't necessarily mean you're peeing a lot each time, just you're urinating a lot more frequently, many more times, and you might not be peeing that much each time, it's just you have the urge to urinate a lot. I really emphasize that. But increased urinary frequency can be caused by other things as well, like a UTI, especially if you have other associated symptoms or an enlarged prostate, but keep that in mind. So the kidneys are important in balancing the fluid and electrolytes in your body and excreting certain things in your urine. So if your kidneys are damaged or toxic, that balance of fluid and electrolytes can be out of whack and that can contribute to you needing to urinate a lot more frequently. Another urinary change can be blood in your urine. So normally red blood cells should not be filtered out by the kidneys. They should stay in the blood. But if you have damaged kidneys and you have a damage in this filter, red blood cells can start to leak out through this filter into your urine. So you might see blood in your urine. Another one that you should not ignore is bubbly or foamy urine. Yes, if you have damaged kidneys, you could end up having foamy urine that you need to flush the toilet multiple times to kind of get the bubbles down, almost like beer, like that kind of foam. And that's because if you have damaged kidneys, you could end up having protein like albumin in your urine, which contributes to that frothing. You definitely don't want to ignore that one. So I would recommend seeing your doctor if you have any of those urinary changes. You can also have urine that becomes darker or cloudy as a result of kidney damage. Actually, when I was learning about kidney disease in med school, the person that was teaching us told us that she actually diagnosed herself with kidney disease when she learned that it was not normal to have frothy, foamy urine. She learned it in a lecture and was like, I have that, oh my goodness, I have this kidney disease. This is why med students tend to be really paranoid. They're learning about all these diseases. You end up thinking that you have all of them 
And I mean, sometimes people do. Number two, fatigue and insomnia. So this is a bit of a tough one because it can be common with other things, but if you have toxic kidneys, meaning you have a buildup of toxins in your blood, impurities, things like urea, things that should be in your urine but are building up in your blood, because remember, kidneys keep your blood and body clean. They are a filter. So if you have impaired kidneys and you have kidney disease or an injury, you could get this buildup of these toxins, which can make you feel really tired, have difficulty concentrating. That's another common thing. And difficulty sleeping because you have these impurities. You might struggle with insomnia. A complication of kidney disease can also be anemia because remember, kidneys are involved in red blood cell production. So having anemia can also contribute to making you feel fatigued. Also, sleep apnea tends to be more common in people who have chronic kidney disease, and that can contribute to insomnia and difficulty with sleep. Number three, dry and itchy skin or skin changes. This can be a sign of mineral and bone disease because of kidney damage. So you can have an imbalance in different minerals and electrolytes in your blood. For example, a buildup of phosphorus can contribute to itchy skin. So if you have itchy skin out of nowhere, it's not going away. It's not caused by something else. It could be potentially a result of toxic kidneys. Number four, decreased appetite. This can also be accompanied with some nausea and vomiting. You might find that food doesn't taste as good. And especially if you're losing a lot of weight unintentionally because your appetite has decreased, this is definitely something to watch out for. If you have unintentional weight loss in general, it's always something to mention and bring up with your doctor and investigate because it could be a number of things, one of which could be kidney disease. So if you're noticing decreased appetite or you have some unexplained nausea and vomiting that's not going away, definitely consider this. Number five, edema. So that is swelling. You can get swelling, especially in the lower extremities, like in your legs, your ankles, your calves, your feet, and you can also get it around your eyes. So you can get like swollen eyes. This is quite common in people who have kidney disease, but you can also see it in chronic heart disease and you can get what's called pitting edema and you can do the fingerprint test. You can actually test this on yourself. If you go and take your thumb and you press into your lower leg, it should not leave an imprint that lasts for a few seconds. Now, if it does, that could mean you have swelling down there and you have a buildup of fluid. And so that leaves this kind of indent that lasts a few seconds before it kind of comes out. This is because if you have damaged kidneys, you've damaged that filter. So you have leaking protein. You could also have retention of sodium. So things that filter isn't functioning properly. So then you can get this buildup of fluids. Number six, high blood pressure. So kidneys are extremely important in regulating your blood pressure. Damaging this filter, damaging kidneys and their function can lead to a backup in this process and can lead to high blood pressure or hypertension. And this is kind of like a bad kind of cyclical process because hypertension and blood pressure can further damage your kidneys. So kidney damage can cause high blood pressure and then that can cause more kidney damage. So it's just an endless bad cycle that you don't wanna have. Number seven, bad taste in your mouth or almost like a metallic taste. Even bad breath that has like this smell of ammonia, which you kind of, you know, you kind of have that ammonia smell in urine that you might be familiar with. So if you have this and you're experiencing it, it can be really unpleasant and it could be a sign of kidney disease. So if you're experiencing this and you don't have a cause for it, definitely talk to your doctor. Number eight, muscle cramping. Like I said, kidneys are so important in electrolyte balancing. So things like calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium are all balanced by kidneys. And many of them are crucially important in normal muscle function, contraction and relaxation. So if you have an imbalance of these electrolytes and things are all out of whack, you can end up having muscle cramping. Muscle cramping can also just be a consequence of like a magnesium deficiency or calcium or just an imbalance in your electrolytes, but that imbalance of electrolytes could be because you're not getting it in the diet or it could be because of kidney disease. Okay, and I have to mention an extra one, number nine, no symptoms. Yes, early kidney disease can have no symptoms at all or very subtle symptoms. That's why it can just be missed by people and people can get diagnosed later on, which is not ideal. It's better to catch it early and try to correct it. So if you have some of the risk factors for kidney disease, like diabetes or high blood pressure, definitely something to talk to your doctor about to see if maybe even if you're not having any of these symptoms, maybe you should get your kidneys checked out and see how they are functioning. Of course, there are more signs than just these eight if you have kidney damage or toxic kidneys. And an interesting one for you to know 
note also could be vitamin D deficiency. If you have damaged kidneys or kidney disease, you could end up having a vitamin D deficiency even if you're supplementing with a lot of vitamin D. That's because your kidneys are needed in converting vitamin D into its active form. So if your kidneys are damaged, you're not gonna be able to convert vitamin D to the active form that it needs to be in your body, even if you're supplementing with it. So if you're chronically low with vitamin D and can't correct it, the underlying cause could actually be kidney disease. Okay, so we know the signs of toxic kidneys of kidney disease, but what causes kidney disease? Well, the two most common causes of chronic kidney disease are diabetes and high blood pressure. Now, these two are related to each other and can sometimes come together as a pair and just worsen each other. They're friends, but they're, they're toxic friends. So this is really important because the two most common causes of kidney disease can potentially be preventable with lifestyle changes, with diet, so when we talk about diabetes and insulin resistance and a diet high in sugar, all these things can contribute to diabetes. There are really significant and dire consequences of chronic diabetes with uncontrolled blood sugar. Diabetes that's not controlled can cause microvascular complications. That's what we call it. That means it basically attacks and damages the small blood vessels, specifically in the kidneys and in your eyes. So you can get what's called nephropathies. So you can basically get damaged kidneys and also retinopathies, so damaged eyes, which, which can actually cause people with uncontrolled diabetes to go blind and lose their vision. I think a lot of people don't know how severe the consequences of diabetes are when you don't control it. When I worked on internal medicine, I saw a lot of people with really poorly controlled diabetes and horrible consequences like amputation of their limbs. I mean, it's just so incredibly sad. And that's why I'm trying to do these videos to help you understand and to help motivate you and inspire you to make these changes for your health because they are possible. They are challenging. They are so challenging, but you can do it and we can do it together. And it's so important to be informed about this stuff because a lot of it, if you're proactive, you can either prevent it, which is ideal or reverse it. So this is the reality of over consuming sugars and processed foods in our diets. It's not pretty. Eating a diet high in sugars and high in processed foods also contributes to a lot of inflammation in your body, which also contributes to high blood pressure and diabetes. So if you want to prevent kidney damage and having toxic kidneys and chronic kidney disease, one of the biggest things you can do for your health to prevent that is limiting sugar in your diet and limiting processed foods. This can help prevent insulin resistance, which can help protect your kidneys and help just prevent your overall health because insulin resistance and all this inflammation in your body doesn't just contribute to kidney disease, but a bunch of other chronic diseases. There are of course other causes of chronic kidney disease. We didn't focus on those today because the two most common ones, like I said, are, are diabetes and blood pressure, and they are the two that we can do the most intervention with and can be most preventative with. So if you get one thing out of this video, I would be so happy if the thing would be to limit sugar in your diet and limit processed foods. Even if you don't fully eliminate sugar, even if it just helps you limit it and have a more balanced diet, then my job is done. Okay, so don't forget to subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can become the healthiest and best version of yourself. Let's do it together.